so far we've looked at uh, price rigidity, so we've looked at the frequency of price changes, um, and even more interestingly, we've looked at the pass-through of marginal cost into prices, which is, uh, I think, the proper um, evidence of price rigidity, because we saw that this pass-through was incomplete. Now we're going to move to wage rigidity, and to start with, um, I want to show you a little bit uh, of evidence on the frequency uh, of wedge changes and, and also evidence on the distribution of wedge changes. Um, so the first thing that we can um, look at is a very nice uh, survey of a large scale um, project studying wedge rigidity. Um, this is a survey by uh, uh, Dickens and Coulter. that was published in um, 2007. So this project was titled the International Wage Flexibility Project. Um, it was run across um, 16 countries by a number of researchers, and the, the survey of the results was um, published in the Journal of Economic Perspectives. Um, and so the idea is to try to look at how wages change across a broad range of uh, country. And so it was called wedge flexibility to see whether wedges were indeed flexible or whether there were some rigidities. Um, so this um, first table that I've put here comes directly from their paper, um, and it's showing a little bit the scope of the project. And you see, this is a very, uh, this is a really uh, broad uh, project. So uh, 16 countries were involved, 31 data set. Um, you can see that more than 30 million wedge changes were observed. So this is really large scale. Um, and so here, is a, uh, here are all the countries that are involved and also the source of the data. So you see that you have a bunch of countries. Uh, so these are mostly European countries and OECD countries. Um, so you see that you have a bunch of uh, countries for which the data come from uh, administrative uh, sources. So like say in Australia and Belgium, you have access to social security data uh, or in Denmark. Uh, you have the whole registers of employees. Um, Italy has come from social insurance, so this is also administrative data. Um, in the US, it comes from the PSID. Um, and then you have some household surveys for other countries, which you know typically we think are a bit um, less rel reliable than administrative data. And you can see another thing that differs across the surveys is the measure of wages. So some of them have annual earnings, some have just hourly rates. So here you have annual earnings, hourly rates. Um, so of course, you know, it's not completely consistent, but nevertheless, uh, you will see that you can learn quite a lot from uh, what uh, from what these surveys find. So this is, a, this is a project. And so here is a main table uh, I think the most interesting table from the from the survey. So this is showing uh, the distribution of uh, weight changes um, across all the so pulling together all the countries, pulling together all the years. Um, so on the y-axis you have the share of wage earners that uh, experience that weight change, and on the x-axis, you have the annual change in log wages. So that means that what you have on the x-axis is a percentage change in uh, wages from year to year. And so in wages, this is in nominal wages. These are just in nominal wages from year to year. Okay. And um, so what do we see here? There are a couple of um, patterns that are very interesting. So first of all, you can the most interesting thing, of course, is that you have a huge spike at zero. Uh, so that means that for uh, a, a bunch of workers, you see about 10% about of workers, uh, a little bit less, maybe 8% of workers, uh, do not have a wage change. So 8% of workers have a wage freeze. 
So that's quite interesting. It means that for all these workers, actually, the wage doesn't change from one year to year. So it means that for these guys, their, their wage is going to last at least at least two years. So there's a, a big amount of uh, stickiness that way, that wages, if you remember for prices, um, the average price duration was, you know, maybe between eight and 10 months. Here we see there's a bunch of people who have wages, nominal wages that last, uh, you know, two years or more, which is quite surprising because all the countries that were considering experience inflation during that time. So um, these people have, have, you know, real wages that are falling. Um, so there's a huge lump of wages that do not change at all. So that's the first kind of interesting pattern. Um, and sometimes people interpret that as all oh, this domin downward nominal wage rigidity. That's not fair at all from this. What we can just say is that there is a bunch of people who have just uh, fixed, you know, wages that are fixed for a period of at least two years, um, which is quite interesting. Um, second thing that we can see is that there is a big, you know, so there is a big lump at zero. Um, and then most of the mass of wage changes you can see is around, you know, four or five percent. Um, That's what we see here. So that's nominal wages changed by. Uh, so here it's about four uh, percent. Why is that interesting? Well, because inflation is around that level, you know, across all countries around that period. So this is an example where nominal wage are going to adjust exactly by the amount of inflation. So this big lump here uh, that you have here, this is an example of uh, actually real wages uh, being fixed. So this one, I should say, so this is free. So this is, uh, this I should say, this is a fixed nominal fixed nominal wage. Uh, and here, this is an example of fixed real wage, because you can see that the wages, they do change, but they change by roughly exactly the amount of inflation. So we have a big amount of, of fixed nominal wage and a big amount of fixed real wage uh, in the data. Um, and so that's uh, quite interesting. And uh, I, another way you know, a way through which real wages may be fixed is that um, in many countries you have a cost of uh, living adjustment, COLA, uh, that are, um, you know, either typical of what firms offer in their contract or that are even mandatory. And so in any time that you have this automatic cost of living adjustments so that your nominal wage are automatically adjusted for inflation, then you will get a fixed real wage. So that's how these things may come about. Another thing that's very uh, interesting is that you can see that here you have a lot of workers, uh, you know, a significant amount of workers who do get uh, reduction in nominal wages. So people always say, they say, oh, look, there's a big mass of workers that get a zero wage change in nominal terms. So that means that wages are, are rigid downward. But, you know, that's just not true. You can see that there is uh, a bunch of workers who get uh, wedge cuts here. So here you have a lot of nominal wedge cuts, um, which means that, you know, when we assume that wedges are, are rigid downward in the sense that they are never cut, that's just, uh, you know, that's just inaccurate. Um, there's a, quite a good mass of workers who do get nominal wedge cuts. Um, what we do see is that indeed, in nominal terms, there is a big amount of uh, fixed wages. Um, but you know, it's unclear whether it's because the firm wanted to cut the wage and didn't do it, or the you know the firm just delayed uh, increasing wages because they feel that they could. You know, uh, it, we just don't know from just looking at this data. Uh, you do see that there is, of course, an asymmetry. Wages tend to go up more than they go down, uh, but that's very natural because the price level rises. Furthermore, workers gain experience as years go by, uh, and you know there is also tech, you know, technological progress. So, of course, wages are going to nominal wages are going to go up on average. That's, that's totally natural. All forces are pushing wages to go up. So, of course, there will be more mass on the positive side than the negative side. Uh, this is not an example of nominal wage of a downward nominal wage rigidity, um, and you know strict. 
downward nominal wage rigidity is just not supported by the data. There are a good amount of nominal wage cuts. So strict downward nominal wage rigidity uh, is inaccurate. Now, of course, we know from uh, the wonderful uh, work of uh, Truman Puley that firms are reluctant um, to cut wages. So ethnographic evidence tells us that, yes, firms will be reluctant to cut wages because it damages morale. Uh, but nevertheless, there are cuts in nominal wages uh, in the data. And furthermore, just looking at this distribution, you can't really see that uh, that firms are reluctant to cut wages. You do see it from ethnographic evidence, not from this, uh, not from this survey. Another thing that I want to show you is the kind of uh, heterogeneity across countries. And there are interesting things that we can see in the survey here. So this is just looking at two examples that, uh, so one's the US, uh, the other one is Finland. Uh, so I wanted to show you Finland because in Finland, so this is the second, uh, second panel here. Finland is quite interesting because there indeed there are no reduction in wages. So this is a very uh, neat example of downward nominal wage rigidity. There are absolutely no uh, no wages that are cut. But what's also interesting is that there is no really not really a mass at zero. There's there is a little bit a little mass here, but it's very tiny. So you don't really have that big mass uh, of wages that are just frozen. Uh, so that's kind of interesting. On the other hand, so both wages tend to go uh, tend to go up in Finland during that time. Uh, and these two lines here that you have, uh, this is showing uh, inflation during that time. And so you can see that uh, wages tend to increase more than inflation uh, in Finland in 1988. So you have an increase in, uh, in real wages in general. So if really um, the downward, strict downward nominal wage rigidity was a thing, all, all Eastern grants should look like Finland, where there is absolutely no wage cuts. Of course, that's not the case. This, as I was saying, um, so this is inflation, the two line. Previous year inflation and contemporaneous uh, inflation. Um, then I showed you the US. So again, here you have inflation in the US. So you can see that there's a, you know some amount of wedge cuts. Uh, you but you have a huge mass, uh, a huge mass at zero, bigger than on the aggregate data. Uh, so you have a big amount of wedge freeze. Uh, in nominal terms, um, and you this you do see also. So here there's also wage freeze, but in real term. Because a lot of the changes are, are around inflation. So this is in real term and this is in nominal terms. Anyway, and, and you can look at the paper. It's very nice. There's a lot of heterogeneity uh, across countries.